25. Secant squared x plus cosecant squared x minus the quantity tangent squared x plus cotangent squared x. Did you guys have thoughts on this one? Or I would not actually. Oh, oh well, I already started this one. I mean, you could, but I think you're taking a much more difficult route. Much more difficult route. Okay, so first thing, let's work on, let's remove the parentheses. Okay, because here's what I see. I see a lot of squared functions being added and subtracted. So when I see a lot of squared functions being added and subtracted, my brain goes and says, are there Pythagorean identities in here? Now, before we do that, I mean, right now we have a parenthesis that has secant squared and cosecant squared. Those aren't Pythagorean identity. Over here, I have tangent squared and cotangent squared. Those together aren't Pythagorean identity. So let's first of all start by, let's get rid of this parentheses, which the first set is just going to be secant squared x plus cosecant squared x. And then what do we do with this minus? Distribute it. So this is going to be minus tangent squared x and minus cotangent squared x. Can we move stuff around here? I would suggest we move stuff around because secant squared, when we start thinking about Pythagorean identities, goes with what function? It's in the same Pythagorean identity as tangent squared. So I'm going to move stuff around. I'm going to keep my secant squared x. And then I'm going to maneuver and just put the minus tangent squared x right after it. Then I'm going to go back and pick up my cosecant squared x. And I'm going to keep the minus cotangent squared x right after it. So all I did is just took two terms and moved their positions, yes? Mm -hmm. Now, what are the Pythagorean identities we need to consider? One of them is... One plus tangent squared equals secant squared. That's from your list, yes? What are you recognizing here? If I maneuver this a little bit, what can I do? If I subtract the tangent squared over to the other side, I have one equals secant squared theta minus tangent squared theta. What are you recognizing right here? We have a one right there, yes? What about cosecant squared minus cotangent squared? Well, what is our other Pythagorean identity? One plus cotangent squared theta is equal to cosecant squared theta. But does that maneuver the same way? Yeah. If I subtract my cotangent squared theta here, I end up with 1 equals cosecant squared theta minus cotangent squared theta. And notice, what do we have? That right there. So we end up with 1 plus 1. And then... Our math issues kick in, and we get all sorts of weird answers. I personally write down 1 plus 1 is 2, because that's what I would like to believe. You do no, you, but... Is hard. Now, could you have gotten there changing everything to sines and cosines? I got that. Is that what you did? Yeah. Okay. You definitely could. I'm not going to say you can't. just doesn't mean you took the most direct route. That's a really easy way to say 1 plus 1 is 2. <laughs> Okay, next question. Thirty-five. 
35. You know what? For safety's sake, I'm just going to go to a new screen. I'm really not sure how much 35 is going to take up, but it could take up a decent bit. There's fractions, right? Sine x over cotangent squared x minus sine x over cosine squared x. Man, one different letter, and it'd just be something minus itself is zero. You see what I'm saying? Like, one different letter. Never that's Okay. We have options here. And I'm curious to see what you guys have to say. This is one as I look in my notes. I have it like started in three different ways. Well, cosine equals not cosine. Well, tangent equals that's cosine. Percent. Oh, I changed it to cosine mm -hmm. squared x minus one. I really like this. I love moving around. <laughs> yeah, I don't even know where I want to start on this one. I really don't because there are multiple different ways that we could go. So, what options are you guys coming up with? You can change cotangent to sine. Mm. Cosine over. Cosine over. Cosine over. So then we're all in terms of sines and cosines? That might honestly so, be a lot easier than what it is to might be. Because then I was in okay. cosine. Yeah, and that's where when you change things, you probably want to, you know, unless there's a reason, you want to go more towards <laughs> sines and cosines. Just because they're more universal. Everything can mesh with sines and cosines. So, um, trying to decide how I feel about this. Let's try it. Okay. I say, and I may backtrack here. So, if we think about this, this is what? Sine x over, so cotangent is cosine over sine. So cotangent squared is cosine squared over sine squared? Yes. But then each Ooh. Sine okay, I can see where this is going because, okay, sine x over 1, that's that fraction, right? Divided by this is multiplying by the reciprocal. Am I doing that right? You are. Okay. I like where this is going, actually. I really do. I never know until I get partway into it. So when you put this together, we have what? Sine cubed x over cosine squared x. Now, I kind of left it behind. Probably not a smart move to do. We also had minus sine x over cosine squared x. Now, I said a moment ago I really like the way where this is going. Why is that? The same denominator. We ended up with a common denominator, didn't we? So it would just be minus sine squared x, right? Well. Over cosine. No, I can't subtract them. Because they're not, it's like saying what's x cubed minus x. They're not like terms. Okay, so I do have a common denominator of cosine squared x, but then sine cubed x minus sine x. I can't do anything there, so sine, that's going to be sine cubed x minus sine x. As I said, it's like saying what's x cubed minus x. Can't do anything. Okay, so now do we see the GCF? Okay, okay, I see where I'm going to go with this. 
sorry, the teacher, as a teacher, I have to think, okay, where am I going to go if we do it this way? Where am I going to go? I got it. So GCF of sine x. What do I have if I factor sine x out? Sine squared x minus 1. You see the Pythagorean identity? I do. Need a side note? My side note is that, what do we know? Sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is 1. Can you manipulate that around and make it match this? Uh huh. So if I subtract, basically I need to subtract 1 here and I need to subtract the cosine squared over, right? So I'm going to have sine squared theta minus 1 is going to be equal to negative cosine squared theta. You see that? Sine squared minus 1 is equal to negative cosine squared. So, okay, I'm going to bring this up here. So I still have sine x out front, yes? Sine squared x minus 1 is becoming... Negative cosine squared x. Negative cosine squared x all over cosine squared x. And because it's on top, it's something multiplied by something. Your cosine squared x's can cancel, leaving us with negative. And so then we have sine x times negative, which is negative sine x. <clears throat> I really don't think as I look at my notes that's the way that I've even gone. It works. kind of like it in a way. Okay. I can show you about three other ways to start that problem. Not going to, but I mean, that, that's how these problems work sometimes. Sometimes there's pretty much just one way. Sometimes you're unlimited. Okay, we got another question. What was it? 37. 37. <laughs> Excuse me. You have what you need on this page, right? Yeah. Well, you know, I might be able to get 37 in there, but... Oops. We don't want to do calculus today. Pre-calc is enough. Pre-calc is enough, right? Okay. 37. What was the problem? Uh, secant x over sine x minus sine over Secant over sine minus what? Sine over cosine. Sine over cosine. Okay. Now, should we talk about what we cannot do on the step one? Cancel. We cannot cancel those signs because this is Subtract. subtracting. If it was multiplying, I'd be right there with you. They would have already done been canceled. Okay. So, we need a plan B. Oh. I know that's why I agree sine over cosine is tangent. I'm not sure I want to go that direction unless I see a reason to. I know. Secant is one over cosine. But then you have. Yeah, there's not any canceling going on right now. Um, because my other thought is we could also get a common denominator. I 
And that's and that's where it's I'm kind of debating do we get the common denominator now or wait? So okay. Again, there's no right answer. If we get the common denominator right now, what is our common denominator gonna be? Okay, cosine x sine x, yes? My denominators have nothing in common. They're sine and cosine, so I'm just going to multiply them together. So I'm going to write it as sine x, cosine x. Now, on the first fraction, what is my denominator missing? Cosine x. So I'm multiplying top and bottom by cosine x. On the second fraction, what is my denominator missing? It's missing the sine x. So I'm multiplying top and bottom by sine x. Okay. Now, notice I went ahead and put these as one fraction. Is that okay? Because I'm just going to have to do that next step otherwise. So I'm going to have oops, cosine times secant. It's going to be cosine secant right now. Minus sine times sine sine squared x. I think you guys were seeing something. Someone. Cosine and secant, would they cancel each other? What do we know about cosine and secant? Oh, yeah. yeah. So I'm going to write the step out. You may just see it and go with it. Cosine is cosine over 1. What's secant? 1 over cosine. They're reciprocals, aren't they? Yes. So, let me, and we still have minus sine squared x, and we still have over sine x, cosine x. But the idea is, when you have two reciprocals multiply to each other, the idea of reciprocals is they multiply to be 1. So now, 1 minus sine squared x over sine x, cosine x. Oh, I forgot I went the one. Shoot. That's what I was just looking. Yeah. Yeah. What is the what is the related Pythagorean identity? Sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1. No, we have a sine squared on top. So cosine squared theta is 1 minus sine squared theta. And when I do these side notes, you don't have to show this. But I know at times we get confused, we need the visual. That's why I put it up here, yes? So that I hopefully don't leave anyone behind. So 1 minus sine squared is going to be replaced with cosine squared. Okay. So I have cosine squared x over sine x cosine x. Okay. One cosine on bottom can cancel with one cosine on top. So cosine x has gone here, and then I kind of cancel out the square there, so to speak. So then I end up with a single cosine x on top over a sine x on bottom, which is cotangent x. Oh, good. Your brain hurts? Mm -hmm. A little bit. You're so tired. There's so much to think. <laughs> Again, you, put English in the map? you see why I'm taking several days on this and not just saying, let's move on. It just takes practice. My hope is the more of these we go through in class, the more of them you try on your own, it starts to sink in. I mean, that's the best I can hope for here. Okay? It's just got to start sinking in. It's got to start getting better bit by bit. Now, we did a handful of odds today in class. I can, you know, I'm pretty much out of time at this point. So, I have not checked your odds, so hold on to them. Don't lose them. Okay? Because I'm kind of out of, I could probably walk around. But, 
Did you get a lot of your questions answered? Yeah. Some? Okay, because what do I want you to try for tomorrow? Two, three, the events. The events. And then tomorrow we can spend either part of class or all of class, if necessary, asking questions. Okay? Um, I will check odds and evens at some point. Okay? So hold on to them. And if there's some at odds, you might give them a new attempt now that you've seen a few other tricks, right? Or hit me up with questions, whatever, you know, helps. And if we need to look at more odd questions tomorrow, we can. We've made some progress, I hope. So try the evens. Come back tomorrow, hopefully a little less frustrated, making some progress, and see what we can do. I can't